Ivan Grabit. Uh, if you are a plugin developer, then you probably already know who this person is, um, but allow me to summarize his career a bit anyway. <laughs> so, uh, 20, so before uh, Ivan joined Steinberg 20 years ago, uh, I think you uh, studied image processing and computer yes. science mm -hmm. and worked for various academic institutions for Fraunhofer. Um, and then 20 years ago, he switched to Steinberg, where he developed VST2 and VST3. So that has quite a big impact on all of us. You develop Halion and other um, software synthesizers, <coughs> and Nuendo, and now you are the lead of the uh, research group at Steinberg. So I'm really excited about this talk on uh, VST3, the history, advantages, and best practice. Please give a hand for Ivan. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, welcome to everybody. And uh, I want to, to thank the uh, Holly team and ADC. This event is very a uh, great chance for us uh, developers to, to meet and uh, to exchange and to see the future and to have best practice or like yes. Um, and not a lot, uh, I don't have a lot of time. That's why I will go very fast. Um, this is a uh, agenda for this uh, 25 minutes. A small introduction, uh, maybe a small overview about uh, what is Steinberg, and uh, after this we will jump to uh, VST history uh, from '96 up to now. Maybe a kind of remind, a small reminder for uh, what is VST free, its concept, its philosophy, and then after uh, we move to see the advantage by you developing VST free plugins and some best practice and future and question and answer. Introduction. Yes, uh, my name is Ivan Kravit, uh, like you hear. I'm French, living in Germany and uh, since uh, 97 at Steinberg. And uh, yes, I was always in charge of VST, VST2, uh, VST3, and uh, yeah, programming host, sequencer, Nuendo, Cubase, and a lot of plugins, the ground, Helion. 20 years uh, experience, and my colleague Michel Spork, senior developer in my team since 2009 at Steinberg, too. A small overview Steinberg, uh, we are located uh, in Hamburg, Germany. We are 190 uh, people all over the world, and part in South Germany, uh, in London, in France. And uh, this is our new building. We moved last uh, uh, yeah, spring to this new location in Hamburg. We have the last uh, four it, uh, floors. We have a very beautiful view. And Steinberg is, uh, since more than 10 years now, we are part of Yamaha Group. <coughs> Yamaha, yes, it's a music company, uh, a lot of people all over the world, and yes. More information, you can find this on the internet. Um, what, was, what, what, is, what are our main products at Steinberg? We are focused on music, post production, and um, one of big products, uh, well known Cubase for music production. Uh, Nuendo is for uh, post production, uh, Wave Labs, audio editing tools. And Dorico, since one year, a uh, new product in scoring. And we had a lot of other small uh, products living around this main product. For this product, over the last uh, 25 years, uh, we had to develop um, our own technology. And we have uh, two main technologies, which, uh, which are open to the public, which can be used by a uh, third party as um, hosting or as plugin, as client or server. We have the ASIO technology, um, which allows to, to, for host application to talk to an audio driver and, uh, in a very efficient way. And we have the VST technology, virtual studio technology. And I will go now in the VST technology and uh, show you a little bit the history of VST. <coughs> Everything started at 1996. Um, the idea was, uh, I was not at this time at Steinberg, it was one year before my start. And um, Charlie Steinberg uh, already 
designed some small plugins and uh, was not sure about the, the interface and after one or two years def defined, okay, this should be the interface and uh, there was an interesting uh, discussion at this time. Uh, do we make it public or not? And uh, there was 50-50. And they decided to make it public. I think it was a great decision for Steinberg and for the community. Uh, three years after, um, yes, we decided to extend the VST protocol to MIDI support and to allow uh, yeah, the first MIDI instrument, as a virtual MIDI instrument, it was Model E, there was a small other uh, v, uh, VB1, Model E, and uh, yes. It was the first time it was possible to have a MIDI input in a plugin and to have uh, multiple audio output. The VST2 was designed for this. And at the same time, we provide uh, the VST GUI, which was uh, yes, part of my job at this time, to have a small library allowing plugin to the de plugin developer to have a UI. Uh, library SDK. 2000, we had some small improvement. It was a, always a continuous developing. <coughs> yeah, um, 2001, what a little bit improvement, but it's not a big issue. 2003 was very uh, a little uh, uh, a jump in the new world with surround. Um, we define. We extend VST2 to have strong uh, support, and it was especially for Nuendo. And uh, at this time, it was possible. We, we had, at this time, a plugin, a surround panel, which was already 3D. OK, there was no really uh, use case, but it was available. <coughs> and 2006 was the last version of VST2 with support from Mac Intel and 64-bit platform. <coughs> and at this time, we thought, OK, uh, we want to extend to have more feature. And uh, it was very difficult to say, OK, we use this VST2 uh, padding, which is uh, based on C callback. And it was not very easy to extend it. And we say, OK, we have to um, start from something new, which allow us to be more flexible for extension to add new feature. And that's why we concept and design the VST3 2008, which is a system based on interface. It's a little bit like COM, DITX, but a little bit more easier to use, not this complexity from Microsoft, a little bit more, yes. You, you keep the best from COM, which allow us to have factory concept. I will come later on, on some advantage of VST3. And uh, to provide every string with UTF, Unicode, and uh, yes, at the same time we deliver some wrappers to be to put the VST3 as a center place and to have different artifacts coming with this uh, VST3, VST2 on AU at this time. After this, we add some small improvement uh, with feedback from the community. We we start to redesign a bit the SDK to be Yes, to add more uh, workflow improvement uh, functionality. I will go back later, too. And uh, one of the first uh, yes, VST3 instrument was uh, in embedded uh, plugins in uh, Cubase. Uh, a next step, a big step for VST3 was uh, 2011 with 3.5 where we add this uh, not expression. This is something, something which is defined now in MIDI MPE uh, with this multi-dimensional this expression. Uh, yes, that was a quite a big step. And, um, we add a lot of some feature. I will come back later on to uh, context menu. And surround 3D was part of this. And the VST GUI version 4 uh, was a, uh, it's a big change because we had a lot of uh, uh, in-place um, UI editing, uh, what you see is what you get, and uh, we put it as an open source in GitHub at the same time. 
And uh, yes, small updates with uh, 3D support and uh, a new wrapper, uh, iOS Interap Audio support, which is part of the SDK. Dolby Atmos support, small, uh, small uh, improvement uh, for yes, channel context, a little plugin to have a to ask the host, oh, in which uh, track I, have, I am instantiate, which is the name of the track, which color the track has, and you can use this information to put it on its own UI. Some add-on for HDPI, IDPI um, support, and uh, 2016, we decided to move from the old mailing list, which were, was working uh, more than 20 years, to the forum, it was a, a big step, a big decision inside, inside uh, Steinberg, but I think it's a, it was a good decision too. Um, this year, we had a new uh, version. We define uh, a way how VST3 uh, should work on the Linux system. That's why we put it as a preview version, and uh, yes, we use CMake for this, and uh, we had a lot of uh, some example hosting example to help people to migrate uh, for the hosting part to see how this is the best practice to host hosting VST3. And the same time, be because of Linux, we uh, offered the dual licensing. I will come back to dual licensing later on. And last week we had uh, an update of VST, and uh, we had Ambisonic support. Uh, and the new wrapper, AX wrapper. It means that if you um, develop a VST3 plugin as main plugin, you can get now AU as artifact, VST2, AU version 3, uh, AX, and that's, yes. And this without any, uh, a lot of effort. It's, uh, yes, some, some small file to add. And now I will go back a little bit about the uh, concept, VST free concept overview. Um, a VST free plugin is defined by two uh, components, a processor component and a comp controller component. And each of these components have a different job. And it's very important to have this concept to have separation. The main component is a processor. This is a um, component which is doing the, the, the work to the, the processing DSP itself. It's a, like a black box for the host. It's a, um, yes, uh, define a, a number of inputs. Input could be audio, in MIDI event based on parameter change and could generate outputs, audio outputs, events, outputs on parameter change at the same time. The controller part is there um, uh, for uh, defining uh, which parameter are used by this, which parameters are export from the plugin. And uh, the other main part is to uh, <coughs> allow the host to ask for a UI, to an uh, editor to be open. The idea to have these two components is, um, is because we wanted to, uh, to allow a host application to process uh, a part of the plugin on a specific uh, machine because this machine is very uh, my big uh, uh, processor and puts the UI or the controlling part of the separate machine and due to this separation of code it's uh, it was easier to realize this kind of stuff but it means at the same time that if the processor wants to talk to the controller or vice versa, uh, the host have to provide such kind of communication. And like I said, the, the two parts could be on different machine uh, control over the net, uh, work, uh, network or something. Yes, could be different protocol. All these uh, components are realized and this is, uh, yes, like I said, it's interface based, a little bit like COM. Here we have a definition from the processor part, and uh, each interface has a number of functions which are dedicated for a specific um, a job. 
For example, a processor is based on two main components, I component, VST I component, which is used for uh, declaring the um, buses or mini uh, input output, the plugin uh, support, and uh, the state, this means the preset or project uh, chunk. And uh, if you press the on off button on the plugin, it will, uh, this component will be activated. And the audio processor is there for the processing itself. It provides a process function. And put it together, you have the processor part. And only this already is enough for processing in the background, for example, or yes, background rendering uh, effect. It just sends a, a state which represents the model of the DSP, and you call the process method with audio buffer. The controller part. Just add a edit controller and the edit controller allow the host to ask uh, plugins give me uh, how many parameters you have. Uh, all the parameters are structured, uh, which is the name of a specific par uh, parameter and please create an editor for me. And you can save a chunk or you can save the controller. Uh, when you save a preset of VST3, you save always two parts. You save the processor part, which represents the DSP model. It could be uh, the frequency, the cutoff, or I don't know, resonance uh, values. And the controller part could be, for example, the UI configuration. If the user is doing some change in your UI and you want to save something, you can put it there, and the host have to save the two together. Yes, um, I will go no, now through a different uh, point, advantage of VST3. Uh, due to this new, this based, interface based technology, it's now very easy to add a new functionality. From point of view, from the plugin point of view, you can add a new functionality by adding a new interface to providing a new interface. And from the host point of view, if you, you want to also want to provide a functionality to the plugin, you just add a new interface, and it's clearer for the plugin and the host to uh, to talk uh, together because if the interface is there, it means it's supported. With VST2, it was not always the case. It was very difficult to know. Ah, okay, there's this feature. There, this, there was this can do, but the return value was not very clear, and it led a lot, a lot of mid of problem or crashing uh, by using VST2 on hosting. Yes, uh, strong separation between controller and processor. Like I said, uh, it's allow us to compute the UI or to the, proce the processing and the UI totally separately on different machines. The factory concept, <coughs> this is something we had in VST2, but it was a very uh, rock around. It was done for a wave plugin. It's a shell co uh, concept, and uh, now it's based on the, yeah, the definition uh, of the factory. Uh, a DLL, a plugin um, library, can contain inside itself multiple plugins. What we wanted to achieve with VST3 and was a cross-platform, not like AU or DirectX, only for Windows, AU, not for Mac, wanted to be the cross-platform uh, format. That's why we are now this year on Linux. And uh, iOS through the Interap Audio, it's possible to, yeah, to use VST3. And uh, the SDK come with uh, some testing tools. I will come back later on with this stuff. Huh? Another point of VST3, a big advantage is usability. We integrate directly at the beginning uh, interfaces which make clear all uh, plugins should be resized inside the host um, from the plugin itself or from uh, the host if the host want to resize the plugin and it's possible we use it uh, in, in standard products uh, that's to ask a plugin for different view currently we always open one view for a plugin but we can open the plugin in different Maybe two times the same plugin on two different screens. If you are working on the big uh, console, 
you have a, with, uh, display here and you want to see the same plugin and you can control in from different uh, displays. It's something possible with MSD3. We have such a helper uh, method to, to ask the plugin, hey, give me the parameter under the mouse. And automatically, if you have a remote control, you can control the last uh, uh, touch button or, yes. You need selection. Um, I would do this. <laughs> um, what is possible uh, with VC3, you can organize your parameter, uh, especially if you have a plugin with a lot of uh, uh, parameters. For example, Helion has more than 4,000 parameters. And if you put it as a long list, it will be very difficult to find them. But with VC3, you can define a tree structure. And for example, here we have a multiband compressor where there is four bands and every band have is, are put, uh, is put in a folder unit one, two, three, four, five. It makes it easier for the user if we, from the host application, find, uh, to, to search a dig, uh, specific parameters, to add it to a quick control or to show the automation. I don't know what the host. We have a better remote control support, uh, especially yeah, for us, Schlenberg with Yamaha uh, devices. Uh, it was important to, uh, to, to have a way to define uh, or to um, um, yes, put some parameters in the right order on different, or different remote control if, it's for, if it was uh, for four uh, knobs of eight knobs. And we have this inside. Channel context um, allow us to, um, yeah, like I said before, a plugin to ask which uh, track uh, is. Uh, um, well, the, the name or the color of the track where the plugin is instantiated. Context menu is something very uh, interesting. This it's allow you, it's allow the plugin to ask the host, oh, I just yet now want to have a context menu on this button in my plugin. And uh, it gives a chance to the host to add its own entry for this parameter. And uh, for example, Cubase adds some the first free entry, uh, which allowed to say, hey, Cubase, uh, show me the automation for this parameter. It's very useful. If you have a lot of parameters, you can navigate easily between automation and UI. Note expression, uh, very important for Rolly and all the seaboard key uh, keyboard where uh, you can pair note um, define uh, a modulation. And if you move the note in Cubase, the modulation will move with the, with the note, and uh, you can change the pitch for a given note. If you have a play a note, and you can, we, can, we want to change the pitch after, it's possible with note, note expression. It's part of VST. Processing, we add a lot of uh, new stuff. Uh, Sidechain, it's clear defined with VST3. And uh, we have multiple uh, MIDI event input which allow to bypass this 16 uh, MIDI channel limit. We have silence flags, which allow to uh, the plugin know that, oh, the audio input is now silence. It helps uh, the plugin to say, OK, I don't have to process something. Or I can optimize my processing and to can save a resource. And not a lot of time now. <laughs> it's almost at the end. Oh. Mm. Yes, I think the slide will be provided huh, for people on this. Yeah. This is, I wanted just to talk about uh, VST2 to VST3. Uh, when you want to update your plugin to a VST3, there is some guideline here how to do it. There is three points. What is very important is the, uh, for the host is to find the plugin to be sure that the ID is uh, UID is well defined. And there is two ways to do it. Uh, we have a way to, um, uh, to be compatible with project and preset if you want to go from two yeah, to version three and uh, the parameter IDs. And what's important, we have provide a VST2 wrapper uh, which show how, how this work. And uh, yes. Another point testing is something uh, it makes sense to, to make for plugins. I will provide three different uh, testing environment uh, application. Validator is something we add now by 
uh, as for as example, where you each time you compile a plugin, you can add it to your IDI. It will uh, uh, process a series of unit tests, um, which for sure for ensuring that the VST free uh, interface is working well. It's uh, everything we provide is uh, open source. The source code is there, open source. Too. And uh, you can add your own test inside this uh, environment. We have a very small uh, UI uh, editor which works on um, Linux, Mac, and Windows, and a small host, audio host using Jack technology. And this main application where you can load uh, more series from test of test and uh, yeah, for checking the VST free conformity. Since uh, yeah, M May this year, we have uh, this dual license in Steinberg uh, SDK. And uh, this was uh, asked for the Linux uh, community. <laughs> it means now that if you, we have in the SDK a, a list of uh, how to uh, use the licensing. But if you are a university and you want to publish an open source plugin, I don't know, a compressor, and you want to uh, publish a VST free uh, source code, if you are under GPL. For other use cases, you have to sign the license with Steinberg. It's the same. We don't have, we, it's not possible to redistribute the source code of the SDK uh, <coughs> under Steinberg license, uh, but under GPL, it's okay. Future, we will do a lot of stuff. PST will be continually uh, improved. And uh, yes, um, Main goal is to skip VST2. And uh, since two years, we don't support any more VST2. And uh, in the next near future, we will skip and remove VST2 availability. That means to all of you, uh, please go to VST3. And we are happy to help anyone. We have uh, this uh, developer uh, forum, SDK Standard. And uh, yes. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ivan. Hello? Yep, thank you, Ivan. Um, uh, we went a bit into lunch because um, we, we had some technical problems at the beginning. But if you do want to go to lunch, we won't want to stop you. But anybody who wants to ask any questions, uh, there's now some opportunity. Hi. I'm fairly new to creating VST plugins, and uh, I would like to create a plugin that has a variable number of inputs and outputs, and variable number of parameters. Like, I have uh, eight outputs, but user can add new output, and that would result in creating also some new parameters for that, for that output. So is it possible with, with VST3? Yes. OK. So is, uh, <coughs> if you if something changes in the plugin, you have to inform the host. And there is uh, this uh, main function, is a restart component. And uh, there is different flag you can put. And there is, for example, IO change. It means that the number of uh, input output are changed. And uh, the host have to react uh, correctly. And uh, if the um, for parameter is the same, you can add a new parameter. We have to take care uh, if you change the parameter ID, if you have already automation, uh, the host can have some pr uh, problem. but it's, it is part of DST to have uh, this uh, you know, restart. It's, it's under the name restart component. Can I have a question? <laughs> and another question is about uh, the resizing uh, capability of VST. Um, imagine you have two screens with like one uh, screen is a really traditional screen in a low resolution, and another one is like a 4K screen that has uh, different uh, resolution. Yeah, DPI. And I want to move my uh, plugin from the lower resolution to high resolution screen. And is it possible that it uh, will scale up during this process? Yes, this is a, uh, yes. The host or the mic uh, for Microsoft, they will, the host will get uh, um, this information change and we will send it to the plugin with the scale function. 
it's not only for scaling for HDPI. The scale function could be used for accessibility. Uh, if you want to, to have the plugin uh, two times bigger, we can have such kind of functionality. It's not yet in Cubase, but you can imagine other hosts can use it for making the plugin bigger. But in case of, yes, uh, normally it should, should get. There is some uh, issue on the transition. It should man, uh, maybe jump, and, uh, but it should work. Uh, yes, I saw that now uh, SD, the VST3 SDK provides all the wrappers for most of the plugin formats. And so actually it's a question uh, for Rody as well because uh, Juice also has this wrapper and now uh, is there a possibility that uh, both of the, the, uh, the wrappers can converge and then uh, maybe cooperate uh, to some extent to test so for the developer also, we, we are more, would be, would be very happy to have a, a robust wrapper that, uh, well, that will save a, a lot of time. So I don't know if there are already talks we, or- We had a lot of communication. Uh, we try to, to, yeah, to have the best uh, integration possible from VST3 and uh, we have a good partner at uh, Roli and uh, yes. Uh, so we can expect in the in near future that will be like a, a more closer more, uh, yeah, more close uh, uh, collaboration, more robust uh, implementation I think it's, we, of this. Uh, red, these we were, uh, yes, we were, uh, and we still are in a uh, good collaboration. Uh, for example, Linux, uh, we have talks since one year or two years to, uh, to, have a, to work together to define how it should work on Linux. And uh, for this uh, wrapper stuff, uh, the problem is that uh, almost the wrapper from uh, uh, Juice are based on Juice uh, structure. And uh, if we want to publish for someone else, we cannot put juice in every uh, SDK, VST free SDK. So we need a juice wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> trying to do this in order of questions coming up. Hi. Uh, I have a question regarding uh, MIDI. Uh, with VST2, you could get the uh, raw MIDI data when you had a, get a MIDI message. And with uh, 3, uh, you only get you get it in different ways, and you and some of the data you don't even get, like channels for controllers. Um. <clears throat> yes, it was a decision at this time to uh, because in Cubase we had, for example, a lot of uh, um, merge conflict uh, between uh, parameter automation and MIDI controller, and uh, sometimes they are targeting the same parameters, and the user it was difficult to user, and we decided if it was good or not, I don't. To, to skip this MIDI controller uh, communication from the host to the plugin and use only parameter. It means the plugin have to provide a map to say, okay, this MIDI controller are mapped to this parameter. And from the host, you see only parameters. Uh, this is something uh, we want to improve due to the pressure from a lot of plugin developers. We want to have an inter delicate interface for all this MIDI, MIDI learn. Okay, so maybe not answer your question because it may be more specific uh, MIDI message, but uh, with this uh, fix or fix new interface, it will be easier for uh, for plugin developer to uh, to handle this MIDI controller, especially for MIDI learning. But for specific message, uh, no, it's not not every message are part of this. CSX are controlled. Uh, Normally, polyphony, uh, poly after torch, I'll say. Which kind of message do you uh, think? Yeah, um, we like a, a control on a specific channel. That yeah, you yeah. You, you, cause when I'm getting the the note, I am getting the the channel when where it was sent, but you don't get it on a MIDI controller, I think. Like, like I, I was wondering if there would be a way to just get along with the controller information, just the raw MIDI message as it was sent, for example. Okay. Maybe we have to take this yes. offline. Um, I'm sorry, but no. Uh, but, but this case, the MIDI learn functionality will be work because we will get we will define a specific parameter for this MIDI channel and for this controller on this the two in one. It is a parameter. You know, this parameter is MIDI controller uh, ten with channel ten, for example. Okay. Um, sorry, I have to wrap up here. Um, so let's thank Ivan Grabet again for this fantastic talk. <laughs>